from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, it's the Cube covering VTUG Winter Warmer 2019. Brought to you by Silicon Angle Media. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of VTUG Winter Warmer 2019 here at Gillette Stadium, home of the New England Patriots. Happy to welcome to the program a community member, someone I've known for uh, many years at this point, Jonathan Frappier, who's with V Brown Bag. Thanks so much for joining us, Frapp. Thanks for having me. All right, so, you know, I watched this event, and when it started, it was, you know, originally the V Mug for New England, and then it became V Tug, and one, there's some of the politics stuff, which we don't need to go into, uh, but part of it was virtualization and cloud, and what's the interaction there, and what will users have to do different, and part of that is jobs. And one of the reasons I really wanted to bring you on is you know, you started out heavy in that virtualization space and you've been going through those machinations. So maybe just give our audience a little bit about you know, your background, some of the things, skill sets. Uh, you've got lots of acronyms on your, uh, uh, on your uh, you know, resume as it is for certification you've done, so let's start there. Sure, so my background, I started as help desk. I did Windows 2000, Active Directory Administration, and Exchange Administration all on site and moved into more server administration and when VMware started to become a thing I was like wow this is this is a game changer and I need to sort of shift my skill set I understand the applications I'm using because I've been supporting them but virtualization is going to change change that so started to shift there and saw a similar thing with public cloud and automation uh, as that same sort of next step beyond infrastructure management. All right, and you've had a bunch of certification. Can you reel off a few, you know, wh where are you today? Wh wh what have you added? Give us a little bit of a timeline. Uh, my first certification was A+, which CompTIA seemingly has come around and joined the ranks of posting to LinkedIn for everybody. Uh, so A+, was my first one, MCP, MCSE on Windows 2000. Took a little bit of a break, went back into it, VCP5 era so four or five years ago, uh, some, some other VMware certs, uh, NSX, Cloud, CMA, and re most recently, the Solutions Architect Associate from AWS. Okay, great, and when, when you look at kind of virtualization in cloud, it's not like you threw a switch one day and said, okay, I no longer need the VMware stuff, I'm going to do the cloud. T tell us a little bit about you know, what led you to start doing the cloud and you know, how you you know, how your roles that you've had and, you know, the skill sets that you want to have for your career, you know, how you look at those. So for me, it is about being able to support what my business is doing. And sometimes the right answer is going to be VMware. Sometimes it's going to be physical. Sometimes it's going to be containers or public cloud or, you know, new fancy buzzwords like serverless. And I've always in my career tried to support what we're, what application we're delivering to get the business the information they need. So for me to do that properly, I need to be well versed across all of that infrastructure so that when, when it's time to deliver something in public cloud or time to deliver something in a container, I'm ready to go and do that. Yeah, and what, what, what's, what's the push and pull for some of the training been? Is this something that you've seen? You said like VMware, you saw it like, oh my gosh, I need to hop on that. You know, I remember back to those early days. I remember engineers I worked with that were just like, this thing is amazing. That was like preview motion even. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, just what that, that impact we've seen over the last you know, 10 to 15 years of that growth. Um, has there been times where the, the business has come and said, hey, can you go learn this certification or has it been you driving most of it yourself? Uh, it's, it's been both. There are times when the business has come and said, hey, we would really like to take advantage of virtualization or public cloud. And it, from a technology perspective, there may have been other factors that would impact the ability to do that. So that's why for me, I try to sort of stay ahead of it when you know, virtualization was taking off and everything I had was on physical servers. I knew I needed to have the VMware piece in my pocket so that when the business was ready and when other things like compliance were ready for it, we can move forward and, and sort of advance that. Same thing with, with public cloud. Now that that's more 
uh, prevalent and sort of accepted in the industry, a lot more companies are moving in that direction. Yeah, and you know, wh what tips would you give your peer if they're a virtualization person? Uh, you know, how are the waters in the cloud world? Is there a lot of similarities? Is it, you know, do I have to go relearn and oh my gosh, I need to go learn coding for two years before I understand how to do any of this stuff? I think it's helpful to learn uh, some level of coding, but do it in an environment that you're comfortable in today. So if you're a VMware admin today, you know, there's Power CLI and, and vRealize Orchestrator, and, and even if you're on uh, VMware's cloud platform, there's just some basic PowerShell and bash scripting you can do in, in vCloud automation. Get comfortable with the environment you know, and then as that comfort grows, when you move, oh, look, there's PowerShell uh, commandlets for AWS if that's the route you go, so I'll already understand the format and how I, how I glue those things together. So you can get comfortable in the environment you're in today and sort of get ready for whatever that next step is. Yeah, I've, I've always found, I, I find it interesting to look at these ecosystems and see where the overlaps and where do the things come together. Uh, you know, I, I, I actually worked with Linux for about 20 years. So, I, you know, back when I worked at EMC, the storage company, you know, I, I supported the Linux group and Linux was kind of this side thing and then you kind of saw that grow over time. And Linux and virtualization were kind of parallel but didn't overlap as much. And then when we get to the cloud, it feels like everybody ended up in that space. And there were certain skill sets that Linux people had that made it easy to do cloud and certain things that the virtualization people had that made it easy to do there, but we're, we're kind of all swimming in the same pools. We see that now in the you know, Kubernetes space now. I, I, I see people I know from all of those communities, um, and it, it's kind of interesting. I'm curious if you have anything you've seen uh, in kind of the, the different domains and overlapping careers. Yeah, if you, for me, I think what's helped is focusing on how the applications the business uses consumed what some of the trends are around how, you know, whether finance or marketing teams are interacting with those applications. If I know how the application works and what I need to do to support it, the concepts aren't going to be vastly different. If I know how Exchange is installed or SQL Server is installed or some custom application is installed, I can do that across a VMware environment, an AWS environment, and should it support it into Docker by leveraging Kubernetes. All right, so you've mentioned a bunch of time the application. Can, can you, how has it changed your relationship with kind of the application owners as you go from you know, physical to virtual to cloud? I don't think it should change much. The, prob the Probably the biggest shift that you have is that at some point now things are out of your control. So when I've got a server sitting in my data center that I can walk down the hallway to. If something's not working, I have access to it. If there's an application down uh, in the public cloud or there's an AWS outage or uh, any public cloud provider outage, I have to wait. And that's sort of, I think, the thing that I've seen business struggle with the most is like, well, it's down, go fix it. It's like, I can't get to it right now and I'm probably not driving to Virginia or Oregon to go uh, reboot that server for Amazon yeah, or whoever yeah, it is. No, absolutely. The big shift we've seen, right, is you know a lot of what I as IT am managing is now things that aren't in my environment. You know, there was my data centers. I might have had hosted data centers where I'd call somebody up and you know uh, you know tell the Rackspace person to reboot the server. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yep. um, or it's right. It's in the public cloud. In which case, it's like okay, what tools? What can I troubleshoot myself? Or is there some you know outage that I'm not aware of and you know is affecting me? It's a uh, it's a good shift to have for a infrastructure person because. We're really getting to the point now, I think the tails, uh, the scales have tipped to focusing more on delivering business value versus delivering infrastructure. The CFO doesn't necessarily think or care that spinning up a new VM faster is cool. They care about getting their application to their team so that they can do their work. So um, I think taking a, you know, going to public cloud or going to other platforms where that's removed, it sort of forces you to move to supporting supporting those business applications. Uh, so, I, I, I'm curious, it, every time we have one of these generational shifts, Tom Tom is like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be out of a job. Uh, I'm a server admin, virtualization's going to get rid of me. I'm a virtualization admin, cloud's going to get rid of me. Uh, this whole serverless thing will probably just get rid of all the infrastructure people. Um, I read an article uh, yesterday, it was called The Creeping IT Apocalypse, uh, is what they called it. But, you know, you know, what are you seeing? Is there general fear in your peers, or, you know, do you just, you know, dive in and understand it and learn it, and if you can stay, you know, up with or a little bit ahead of the curve, uh, you know, you're, you're going to keep employed. 
<laughs> I would say that there's a mix. There's some people, uh, even just a few months ago, uh, some, some folks I talked to and they were just sort of breaking into automation and like how they can automate deploying their application because in their legitimate concern was I won't have a job anymore. And sort of the way I looked at that was my job's going to change. I don't spend my entire day administering Windows 2000 Active Directory <laughs> boxes anymore. So I need, yes, <laughs> I need to shift that and start thinking about what's next. So if I can automate the routine task, you know, deploying an application, patching an application, uh, bringing things up and down when there's some sort of failure, then I, uh, I'm going to naturally grow my career in that way by getting rid of the boring stuff. Yeah, and, and I've been hearing this argument against automation for decades now, um, and the, the, the question I always put to people is like, look, if I could give you an extra hour a day or an extra day a week, do you have other projects that you could be doing or Absolutely. things that the business is asking for that would be better? And I've yet to find somebody that didn't say, uh, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and what are the things that you're doing that it would be nice to get rid of? Um, you know, the other people is like, I, I love the serenity of racking and stacking and cabling stuff. And nothing gets people more excited than beautiful cables in a rack. Uh, I saw yesterday, I saw people like going off about, here's this data center with these beautiful, you know, rack, uh, you know, so with, with the cable ties and everything, but I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, there, there's yeah. more value you can add Absolutely. Uh, out there. So yeah. automate yourself into your next job I is sort that. of the way <laughs> I think like to think about it versus right. automating yourself. So out. Let, let's uh, you know just look forward a little bit. You know, there's all these waves. You know, cloud's been a decade. Uh, data. Uh, I was talking to Keith Townsend this morning on the Cube, uh, and we said you know when he talks to users, it's their data that's super important. Applications absolutely is what drives. Uh, you know my infrastructure, but it's the data that's the super important piece. So you know whether it be you know your your AI or you know you pick your various buzzword of the day IoT. You know data is in the center. So what are you looking forward to? Is are there new certs or new training that that are exciting you or areas that you think your peers should be poking at to help uh, try to stay ahead of the curve? Yeah, and uh, back to my earlier point about leveraging the thing you know today and how to sort of grow your career and that next skill set is how I can look at data and make uh, or understand what's going on around that. So maybe maybe today that's taking some stats from an ESXi host and an application and correlating that data together uh, and help you understand you know, what that means for the application before a user calls in. And that's going to help you grow into sort of this new realm of like machine learning and big data and, and analytics, which I think is really the next thing that we're going to need to start doing as more and more of that infrastructure is shifted away into serverless platforms and, and things that we're not worried about. How can I understand, how can I take that data, transform it, use it, correlate it together to you know, help make decisions? All right, uh, and final thing, give us an update on our friends at V Brown Bag. So, you know, we, we talk, we, we always say, you know, when we go to VMworld, it's like we're there uh, trying to help kind of balance between the business and the technology. You want to go a little deeper and really geek out and understand some of these things, that's where, you know, the V Brown Bag, uh, you know, people are going to be able to dig in with the community and the ecosystem. There was the V in V Brown Bag for virtualization, but V Brown Bag is doing much more than just traditional virtualization today. What, you know, what, what, what's on the docket? Uh, so, upcoming, this year, we're going to have some episodes around Python, so helping uh, admins get to know Python, start to get comfortable with it, which would be a great language to, A, automate things that maybe you're doing today in your application, uh, but also to be able to take data in and, and uh, use Python to uh, manage that data, extract value out of that data so that you can help make decisions. So look for the uh, throughout this year, and. Uh, you know, learn a new thing. All right, Jonathan Trappier, pleasure to talk with you on camera after talking to you off camera for many years. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, and uh, we appreciate you joining us at this uh, virtualization and cloud user event, the VTUG Winter Warmer 2019. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks for watching theCUBE.